So those of you that may follow the UFC, UFC president Dana White seems to be everywhere on the internet right now and he has just lost 30 pounds and actually looks freaking amazing so congratulations to him. Apparently he saw a specialist who via your blood work or doing tests can decide how long you're going to live for and basically gave Dana 10 years to live. Uh, apparently he was pre-diabetic, had problems reaching down to put his shoes on, his legs hurt and he had sleep apnea which can be quite common for people that are overweight. And what this this guy suggested was doing the ketogenic diet. So what do we think about this? So this is what Dana recently said on the Junkies podcast. I did everything he said to the letter. I lost 30 pounds. My legs were so f***ed up. 13 weeks ago I couldn't tie my shoes. No more sleep apnea. I don't snore. Everything is gone in 10 effing weeks. I'm keto. I'm on the keto diet. This is what Gary Breaker told me. There are essential fats. There are essential amino acids. There is no such thing as essential carbohydrates. I've never felt better. I feel like I'm 35 years old again since starting Brecker's diet. Okay, so there's a few things to unpack here. Do we think the ketogenic diet is the only way he could do it? Do we think it's beneficial? Is it something that maybe you want to have a look at and is it gonna change your life? So first off, what is the ketogenic diet? So the ketogenic diet, macronutrient wise, is a diet that is very low in carbohydrates, high in fat and moderate in protein. That alone makes it quite a challenging diet, especially to start with, because it's in a Western diet, we eat a lot of carbohydrates, particularly junk carbohydrates, and it's very hard if you're out and about, doesn't matter if you're on the car, in the car and you go to a petrol station or a convenience store if you're in the States, it's hard to find foods that are solely protein and fat based. Cheese, meats, maybe you get away with some nuts, it's hard, jerky was something you get away with, but you couldn't have a sandwich, for example, you couldn't have a wrap, because the amount of carbohydrates that are in them, you may get away with a small amount, but typically, like less than 5% of your daily calories come from carbohydrates. Why is it called ketogenic? What does it do? And how do we use it? So the ketogenic diet basically works primarily from not having carbohydrates in your diet. Normally when you have carbohydrates, they break down as you eat them in your stomach into sugars like glucose and your body stores them in muscles of your body and your brain uses a lot of them. Your brain is a hog for glucose. So when you take that out of the system, you have a bit of a, oh, where's the brain getting all this fuel from? Well, the body creates something called ketones after a period of time, which is fuel for your body and fuel for your brain. Some people will find that it helps with clarity and they feel very, very good on ketones. So how do we know we're creating ketones and we're in ketosis? So one way you can check if you are creating ketones and thus in ketosis is by a piss test, basically. You get a piece of paper that you urine on or urinate on, and if it goes red or the colors are available, it will show you that there are ketones in your urine, thus you are creating them. Side note, some people will drink ketone drinks and think they are in ketosis because they are peeing out ketones. It is not the same thing. There is a process to get your body into ketosis. Drinking ketones does not do that. Only abstinence or a massive reduction in carbohydrates brings that. So let's have a look at some of the issues or ailments that Dana supposedly had and how the ketogenic diet or other diets may have helped that. So he was pre-diabetic. Diabetes or type two diabetes, which is pretty much caused by self-harm or, or poor eating, let's say, poor eating choices, is when your body's ability to deal with sugars anymore is impaired because of overuse. More importantly, a hormone called insulin. Now, when we eat carbohydrates, they get broken down to sugars, as we spoke about before. But those sugars can't just stay in the bloodstream because our blood sugar will be too high. So our body releases this insulin or this hormone called insulin. And insulin works like a lock and key. It unlocks cells of our body, think of inside our muscles, to open up, accept this glucose, this carbohydrates, this sugar, and store it for a later date when maybe we've had a period without food or we're doing a prolonged bout of exercise and our body will release that back in the bloodstream to be used as fuel. Now, if you abuse this system, much like drinking too much coffee or maybe alcoholism, the body becomes impaired, like your kidneys can't deal with the alcohol anymore or maybe your liver. Um, your adrenals may suffer a little bit from overuse of caffeine. The same thing happens, it's like overuse use of a system of your body. You had so much poor carbohydrates and you raise that blood sugar so often that the body's sensitivity to this insulin is impaired and we become either insensitive to it or even insulin resistant, which is when you start to get diabetes. 
So naturally, abstaining from them or removing massive amounts of them out of your diet allows your body to kind of recover and maybe accept a small amount of carbohydrates. And basically what this is called is called increasing your insulin sensitivity. It is important to know that a calorie deficit alone would help to increase your insulin sensitivity also. Because typically type two diabetes is not just caused via excessive amounts of sugar, it's excessive amounts of calories as well. Otherwise we wouldn't gain weight and we would obviously be in a calorie deficit. So things we know so far, Ketogenic diet, especially to start with, for most people will be very hard to stick to because the Western diet is very carbohydrate rich and just getting used to things you've got to have in your house to allow you to eat in this manner. Lots of meats and veg and of things of that nature. Flip side, it does get you to eat more single ingredients, healthier foods. So you prep your own food rather than buying junk all the time. One thing to note is it only really takes one meal to kind of take yourself out of ketosis. So as soon as you have carbohydrates again, you're gonna stop that kind of, that process of creating ketones for a short time and you have to kind of get back into it. So it's not really a diet that you can really stray from if you want to be in, in ketosis. Some other things to note are, many people will find in the first two weeks of switching to a ketogenic diet, they can be a bit brain froggy and sluggish as they're getting used to running on this new fuel source and not so much carbohydrates. A lot of the ketogenic diet from a Western point of view was, as far as I'm aware, actually found out by Arctic explorers who got trapped in the Arctic with the, the Inuits who lived a lot of like seal fat, seal blubber. And because they were more used to eating Western foods, grains and stuff like that, carbohydrates, they were journaling while they were out there. One guy in particular, I actually can't remember his name, maybe I can find it and put it in the screen. And he basically found that brain fog afterwards and started to feel very good on it as the body started to adapt and it takes a process of roughly two weeks for that to happen. Another benefit that can potentially come from this diet, if you're probably not gonna follow it quite so strictly, is you're going to be able to increase your metabolic flexibility. And what I mean by that is you're better at running off fat and running off carbs and switching between the two. Opposed to being someone who never really goes low carb and really predominantly uses fat or ketones as a fuel source, you're able to flick on both sides of the equation if you like. Dana was also suffering from sleep apnea apparently. This could be a multitude of rings from being overweight to everything else. Now I'm not gonna speculate on those things. I did not do these tests on him. I do not know the ins and outs. I am more obtaining this ketogenic diet to the general population. I think what Dana's done is amazing. Hats off to him, congratulations. I am not here to knock any diet. I don't care, quite honestly guys, what you do as a way of life in terms of food that you eat, if it is making you healthier. And if it's just because I wouldn't want to stick to that diet, doesn't mean that you shouldn't. Things to consider, like I said, is it is a restrictive diet. It does mean you're gonna be emitting a food group. As a general rule of thumb, I don't like to do that. But if someone needs hard, fast rules to stick to, because that's the type of person they are, then maybe it's a diet that's very beneficial for them. There's no, like, it's not like, oh, I could just have that burger because I want it and I could make it work on my calories, secretly knowing that I won't, or no, I can't have a carbohydrate. You see, it's a, it's a hard, fast stop. And for some people, that's a great thing. But for the general masses, I think a bit more flexibility in diet is good for most people so they can still have foods that maybe aren't so good for them, but they enjoy. So there's a bit of information for you about the ketogenic diet. If you like what Dana's done, you're thinking about trying the ketogenic diet, then by all means, go ahead and try it and I hope it works for you. But if it doesn't work for you, that's still a great thing because you will take things from there. I've done a low carb diet and been ketogenic, not wasn't aiming to, but I have been. Uh, and there's things I took from that and there's things that I took from that as a negative, like, I demonized a food group for a short amount of time. But if you're going into that and you're educated, I wasn't back then, and you understand why you are doing something, you're not taking carbohydrates out because they're the devil, because they're bad, but you are putting a hard, fast rule in there to stop you abusing systems of your body, which are very easy to abuse if you fall into those categories of eating excess calories and a lot of junk, especially in the form of carbohydrates and um, processed sugars. We should just touch on the point where Gary said that um, Mr. Brecker or Gary Brecker 
said that there's no such thing as essential carbohydrates, there's essential amino acids, and there are essential fats. And that's true. There's essential fatty acids, which are fats that we get from foods that we eat that our body can't process that we need. There's the same in amino acids, which is what protein is blocked down, broken down to, the building blocks of protein. There are 21, 22, depending on who you ask, amino acids, uh, and some we can create, some we can't. So we have to get food and get complete proteins in. That's why people are so obsessed with having complete protein powders, because it covers all the essential amino acids that you need. Carbohydrates are not essential to life. That does not mean that they are bad, and it does not mean that they potentially aid performance. I would personally not do CrossFit or sports of that manner without carbohydrates in them. Um, for me, I don't feel like I would perform as well, and I feel like there would be a drop off in performance having done both in the past. But again, horses for courses, there's no damage in trying these things, providing you do them safely. and. It's like a game of battleships. Not everything works for everyone, but you might do, oh, missed your battleship, missed your battleship, and then you get a direct hit, and it's a, it's a diet that works for you and fits your lifestyle. And that is a process. Oh.